We are spending a few moments with uh, an extra recorded podcast. Uh, it's uh, with Pastor Sean, Pastor Caleb, because as has been communicated to our church, I am going to be going on sabbatical at the end of April. So at the time of recording, it's 20 days away that uh, those days will uh, fly by. And uh, I thought it would be helpful for uh, Caleb and I in particular to talk about that because uh, it's going to be most different for each of us in different ways. And so I thought it'd be helpful for us to just have a pre-sabbatical uh, conversation and uh, for anyone who wants to listen in on that uh, as uh, communicated to our church. And then I thought it would be good for us to do a post-sabbatical uh, conversation as well, where we reflect on uh, what the uh, the 12 weeks were like for us respectively. So um, just I very, I'll sort of summarize, I guess, um, that uh, I'll be on sabbatical for 12 weeks, starting April 28th. I will preach that morning. That'll be the last time I'll preach until July. And then uh, that ev afternoon, evening, I'll be getting on a plane. Uh, first week will be flying to be with like-minded brother pastors uh, in the U.S. And uh, we'll go on from there, and I can talk about, a little bit more about those sort of activities and what I'll be up to uh, as we go on. So, How does your to-do list look for 20 days? It's kind of exciting to have like a list and be like, I have to get this done sure. before this date, and then I come back and I start fresh. I, I <laughs> wrote one about two or three weeks ago, and then I was scratching stuff off, and it was kind of getting messy, and I'm adding stuff, and so I rewrote it this morning. And uh, there are, yeah, there are a few things to do yet. The biggest um, items on the to-do list are three sermons to preach still. Uh, there's a Sunday evening familiar with sorrow reflection uh, to do yes. this week as well. And uh, then there are just some other things. I, we have a staff lunch scheduled this week. I think it's this week. And uh, I just want to spend some time uh, with everyone and just help set people up well for um, my not being here. And then there's just some administrative things and some people things. There's an elders meeting still to happen between now and then. Uh, there's a wedding ceremony. I'm still be officiating uh, in May because I agreed to do that before the sabbatical plans were um, even thought about and put in place. So I just want to think ahead to that a little bit. And uh, yeah, a little bits of you know this and that uh, to, uh, to just finish off and uh, hopefully leave everyone well served and uh, then be able to focus on the purpose of the sabbatical. This will be a good time. I'm really excited for you guys to go away, um, A, get some rest, B, enjoy some family time and do some intensive discipleship that way. C, you, you've got some pretty fun plans to check out some other residency situations which is a pretty big deal for our church because we've just been talking again and again and again about the residency program that we are uh, launching probably this September. Lord and willing, that's the plan, right? Is it, to have someone uh, enrolled in that sort of residency 2.0 with the new syllabus that's been released to our church. And so, yeah, part of the sabbatical is to just prepare for what we hope will be a significant next season in the life of our church. Who are some of the people you're hoping to talk to on that front? Yeah, great question. So I will have an opportunity to interact with some uh, folks from uh, Nine Marks from Capitol Hill Baptist Church. They do a pastoral internship there. And so I'll have an opportunity just to uh, be in conversation with uh, individuals that way. And then the last two weeks-ish of my sabbatical in July, I am going to be in Louisville, Kentucky. So with uh, God's kindness through his people at Emmanuel Baptist Church, they have a mission house and they have offered that to our family. They actually offered it to us for the whole month and even beyond if we wanted it, but this is the timing of when we're planning on being back um, full, fully engaged in ministry as I am right now. Uh, so that'll be a great opportunity to hopefully connect with Brian Fullerton and or individuals on staff at that church and what they do with their Emmanuel network, and they have a, a, a robust program there where they've raised up pastors, elders, missionaries, church planters. I just want to see what they do ask questions, and then I'm hoping to uh, ma make some connections with uh, some brother pastors at Clifton Baptist Church, also in Louisville, who do the same thing. And then if there's any individuals at Southern Baptist Theological Seminary that would be good to connect with in that regard as well, uh, there would be good uh, good touch points. So those are some of the, the sort of like-minded brother pastors and ministries 
that I'm hoping to connect with uh, over the course of those two weeks in particular in, in Louisville. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that immensely. If you haven't listened to it yet, the Ryan Fullerton podcast where uh, Sean interviews him, uh, you got to you got to listen to it. Uh, that's sort of that's the flavor that we're hoping uh, you'll be exposed to while you're down in Louisville. Absolutely. And and some of the products of their residency in the Emmanuel Network are people like you know Keith and Allison's uh, son. Yeah, that's right. right? And Kevin and, Gabriel. And Kevin, yeah. I, who I'm we hoping, support. Yeah, that's right. And he's going to be here in June. That's right. In Canada, in yep. Ontario, uh, staying in Cambridge, uh, preaching at Hespler that's on right. one Sunday. And, and then Ewell. And uh, Stephen Ewell as well. And actually, I, I would hope to connect with Kevin and to learn from him about his experience going through what Emmanuel does. And so not only talk to people who are in leadership in that program, but also talk to someone who we support who has come through that and he has also started something similar where he's ministering in Ireland. And so just like, wh- how is he thinking about that? How is he? So just time and space uh, to be able to think about that uh, whole area, uh, along with some related readings and reflections on scripture, uh, just to prepare for what we hope is coming. Fascinating comment was made in that Ryan Fullerton podcast, where Ryan said that students come to Louisville for Southern Baptist Theological Seminary, one of the best seminaries in all North America. And they then stay and talk about how the churches were really (laughs) the meat of their experience in many ways. And and, and he he wasn't being derogatory towards Southern. He's like, you are getting high-class education. This is amazing. But the -the on-the-ground experience at these churches is, is what people talk about the most. And, and we've talked about as a congregation how that's our heart for this area. And I think we're seeing that start to unfold in, in our congregation. Uh, it would be interesting to have a conversation with, you know, guy, you know, like guy like John Stairs up the street who, who gets, you know, students coming yeah. through their, um, their church as well. But, man, do we ever long for that in our area? I was just down at Southern Seminary. So Ryan Fullerton saying this, he's a pastor of a church, and maybe we view that with some sort of skeptical, like, <laughs> uh, you've got a vested interest in yes. this, sorry. I was at Southern Seminary in March on our way back up from our conference, and w- just a random guy in the seminary said, you know, this seminary is amazing, but the churches around this seminary are even better. Praise God. And so, it didn't used to be that way. No. Historically. And he doesn't go to one of the three main churches in Louisville, Clifton... Manual and Third, Third Avenue, Avenue, right? Like he goes, he goes to a church. I think it's like half an hour, thirty-five minutes away. Really? And he's like, these churches are what like the students stay here for. That's so, amazing. Yeah, we pray to God that that would take place here in Canada as well. Absolutely, especially uh, we have to consider our own local church and God's providence. We're in the backyard of a Bible college and theological seminary, and vice versa. And so it'll be good to go down and rub shoulders with pastors of churches who are also in geograph- geographical proximity to uh, to the same. I'm, there's differences, obviously, culturally and size and all that type of thing. But how do they think that through? Um, and what lessons have they learned? Uh, what are some ways they've done things they, they, they've changed? Or what advice would be given? Or they just we will go down with questions. Um, and the elders are going to be welcome to send questions with me that they will have that I'll be able to ask on our behalf and uh, bring those answers back. So so I'm a bit of a dreamer. When when I see things on my calendar in the future, I, I dream about how they're going to go and how I'm going to, you know, accomplish this, that, and the other thing. As you, I don't know if you're a dreamer too, but as you look at your sabbatical from, you know, 20 days distance and you're going, okay, here's how some of these things are going to get arranged. And what are you most excited about? Great question. I am. I would say two uh, aspects of uh, well, three. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say three. Uh, one. Well, I'm, I'm not gonna enumerate it. I'll just start. <laughs> I'll just start listing. I am really looking forward to be able to have some time and space without uh, the deadline of a sermon and a Sunday to just be able to read to engage with God's word uh, and to slow that because there's, I don't, there isn't a deadline yet. There are, there's there. I have a set number of books I want to read. There's things I want to do with first and second Timothy. And so there's accountability and expectations in that regard, but it's a 12 week deadline. It's not a, 
five week, day or seven day or every feels like every four days when you're you know preaching regularly uh, the Sunday always comes so just being out of that rhythm and to be able to have that time and space to not feel rushed or hurried because there aren't the day-to-day responsibilities so just to be able to slow and think pray meditate uh, I bought a 232 page a4 journal um and I just can't wait to write and reflect. And uh, that will be wonderful just to have the space to do that. Uh, I'm really grateful for one of the purposes of the sabbatical approved by our elders, which is to just give some intentional time to marriage and family. Um, because there are many occasions where uh, there are things that are, you know, I leave things or I'm not present for things or we, we're just in the life of a pastor, right? And so it'll. Uh, I'm really grateful for the opportunity just to be present at home uh, and in a different rhythm. Obviously, still uh, have responsibilities of things that I'm thinking about and reading and, and that type of thing, but that will be so much more limited and constrained. And so just being present with family uh, is going to be huge. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, connecting with others is going to be amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and even just opportunity to visit other churches yeah. because I'm so thankful that Hespler is my spiritual home. But I, I think I've probably visited in the course of 20 years, I think I've maybe been to, like I can count on two hands, maybe one hand, the number of different churches that I've been to on a Sunday morning. And so it'll, it'll just be great to go and see um, other faithful uh, churches at work yeah. and what God is doing in those places. And then just to sit under the sound of the word with zero pastoral responsibilities with my family. I'm looking forward to that. That'll be, uh, that'll be uh, a delight. And then I, I think the last thing that I would say, uh, well, two things. I'm really looking forward to what happens here when I'm gone. I'm very excited about yeah. that. That really hit home for me when we were all out for down for the count uh, back in February. Uh, you had lost your voice. You were at a retreat still uh, with youth. I lost my voice the day before a Sunday, and uh, Sergey was fevered, and Kevin was out of the. He was in the U.S. visiting family, so all of us pastoral staff were out. Like there was nothing any of us could do, and there was a church gathering happening the next day. So Jake. One of our elder interns, he was he agreed to preach last minute. We had other elders step in, and I watched from home, as which I am grateful to be able to take in the content. I absolutely hate it because this is absolutely nothing like gathering with God's people. I'm just not a fan. Um, but I was in tears as one of our elders was praying during that service. It was just really pressed home to me that the Lord does not need me at all. And just to be able to uh, be sidelined in that moment, the way the Lord used that in my life was actually very freeing with respect to the upcoming sabbatical, which no one else knew about at that point except our elders. And uh, that was a that was really God's kindness to me to realize He doesn't need me. His church is going to be fine. We have good and godly men who are pastors, elders here. And I just can't wait to see what that does in the lives of you brothers, you in particular, Caleb, because you're going to be taking the bulk of the the preaching um, in my absence and uh, just being on point in terms of leadership amongst our staff. And and so I'm really looking forward to seeing how the Lord uses you and uh, just the way that you continue to uh, just exercise and, and grow your incredible gifting that God has granted to you by his grace. I can't wait for that. And I, I was thinking about it the other day um, of how I would pray publicly for the church on that sort of last Sunday before I go and and really genuinely, and this by God's grace, happy to pray and plan to pray that the Lord would use your ministry even far beyond anything he would do with my own. Um, and so I just, I'm excited to see what that, what happens there in the mm-hmm. life of our church. And part of me is a little bit kind of like, I wonder if people will wonder what it is that I do around here <laughs> when I get back. <laughs> so I, I really mean that because you brothers are so gifted. And so I, I can't wait to see what that uh, what that does. And and so I guess if I put a tie a bow on all of that, 
what I'm most excited about is just to see how the Lord works. How is he going to use this? Um, uh, what are his purposes and how will this unfold for his glory and uh, for our good? I'm, I'm very interested and curious uh, about how, how all of that plays out. So that might have been more than you got no, that's one wonderful. question, but those are the things going through my mind. It, 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 there's been a few times while I've been here at HBC where someone has said, you know, I, don't, I, don't, I can't serve here anymore. And they were like a crucial part of that ministry. And it, for good reason. You know, they were just like, I want, I want to serve over here or I need to devote time to this. And I've gone, okay, what are we going to do? And someone else comes along and they fill that role and they do a wonderful job of it and they learn the role and they learn how to serve and they're discipled through it. And I go, see, the Lord had a plan through that, yes. right? It, so it's always cool when, you know, like we're absent for a couple of weeks or on a sabbatical to see like the Lord use this in the discipleship of his people to help equip other people who don't normally get these chances to do this and that and the other thing um, so that you know, the saints are doing the ministry, yeah, and it'll be it'll be fascinating to see uh, how that takes place because it's a whole congregation effort. Absolutely, you know, while you're gone, yeah, and uh, you know, different individuals will need to step up in different ways. I remember uh, when you were gone in Australia, I had a a godly senior saint come up to me and say, "Seems like there's a lot of visitation while Sean's gone right now. If you need me to do any of that, you just let Wonderful. me know." Wonderful incredible for people just to see that and to step into it. And it was the joy of this person's heart to be able to, you know, go and visit somebody. And uh, so, yeah, it'll be a whole church effort. I think we should pray in two ways while you're gone. A, that the Lord would guard your time. Um, there, As you said, it's a 12-week deadline as opposed to, like, someone calls and you're on it immediately, right? Like, there's, there's no tyranny of the urgent. Um, and so that the Lord would guard your time, He would minister to you and your family, and that we would, I mean, we are going to see the benefit of this the minute you get back. That, that's the hope, and yeah. that's the prayer, right? It, and, and I realize that, but this is, this is newer for our congregation. We've had pastors in the past who taken a month. Uh, I think that's happened on two occasions. And so 12 weeks is longer than, and uh, I don't think we've ever called it necessarily sabbatical no. before. Uh, not, nor have we had a policy that has uh, dictated how and what it's for, um, as we do now. So it's, it's newer, and that generates some questions, and people are wondering what the... But it is for the benefit of the church. And, uh, yeah, that's my hope and prayer, too, that someone, me in this case, is going to go away and think very particularly about one area. And read... I, I, I can list the names of the books and that type of thing if we want to do that, but just read, think, pray, connect, learn about one area and then come back, and how will the Lord use that in the life of our church? Yeah, that, that's what it's for. I look at this, and I say, what is the purpose of this sabbatical? The edification of Hessler Baptist Church and all those churches that, you know, we have a connection to. Sure. Right, like, I, I, I see it as a church thing rather yeah. than, like, this is a Sean thing, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, yeah. So I think that should inform the second way that we pray. Like, we need to pray that the Lord would guard your time, that he would minister to you guys, but I think the second way that we need to pray is actually a little bit more personal. Lord, help us while Sean is away to adjust well and to grow and to be discipled and to be matured and to step into areas of service that um, we previously weren't thinking about. And so, yeah, I, you know, I thought about sending out an email to uh, my folks, Bree's folks, and a select other um, number of pastors who I'm connected to and just say, hey, you know, guys, I... Out of 14 weeks in Galatians, I'm preaching 11 of them, and I feel the weight of that, and I could really use your um, pointed prayers on this. Good. But I, w- I want to encourage anyone who's listening to this podcast, Absolutely. please pray for me. Please do. Well, I handle the Word that many times this summer. I feel I, I am sobered by that responsibility. I'm also overjoyed as I, I look. I know. I can see it. I love <laughs> you know, it. Like, so, because you've never... Like, you, like, I haven't touched anything to do with this series Right. I'm so thankful that the Lord has led you to Galatians, which is a perfect interjection as we stop Exodus at the at the first table of the law, and then we'll pick up again with the second table of the law. And in between that is going to be there is one gospel, yeah, and that's what you're going to focus on in Galatians. But I am so thankful that that's been your baby, for want of a better mm-hmm. ter- a word, that uh, you picked, you've divided the text, you've arranged other preachers for those three other weeks, 
uh, so that there can be some some breathing spots along the way and other things that are going on uh, in the life of the church and wedding. We have a wedding uh, that you're officiating in the summer as well. Uh, I'm just so thankful that, uh, but absolutely, it's been. It'll be very much on my heart and mind to pray for you, um, and so I, I echo that encouragement. Um, and I'm glad that you will feel the weight of that. You will experience the joy of that. That you will uh, labor through that. There's nothing like it. And feel the heat of it at times. You know, yeah, like sure, that. absolutely. It'll just be good. Uh, it's just a great experience and and growth. And I I, I expect the Lord will use you. Uh, by all means, uh, in the life of our church in that way. So that's a thrilling prospect. I'm also excited about how camp will change and adapt as well. I've overseen yep. camp for pretty much all the years that we've ever run camp. Yep. And now Sergey is um, overseeing that as, you know, we, we trust Josh. Josh is our mm-hmm. um, ministry director for that. And But there will be, you know, different things that Sergey sees. And uh, I'm excited about how camp will benefit from not having Caleb as kind of the overseer who's in charge of, you know, some of the particularities of that. So, I, yeah, I can't wait to see how the Lord will use that, even just in that particular scenario. Absolutely, and that's just a, another way that responsibility has been transferred or that's will right. transfer or shift. So is some of what is, is my regular responsibility, you will... Uh, take that, and what is your regular regular responsibility? Um, pastor Sergey will take that, and so we're grateful for the the dynamic, the team of pastors that we have, and the trustworthiness that's there uh, for that all to unfold uh, for the benefit, not just of our local church, which we will experience, but our hope is with the need for raising up pastors that this will be uh, of benefit beyond ourselves to as many churches as the Lord would be pleased for us to touch. Uh, via raising up uh, individuals in our midst. I also think that there's something um, beneficial in recognizing that there are uh, just that, like no, none of us are, are needed, none of us are uh, that like, sort of infallible um, a person, that uh, one of the surprising, encouraging, yeah, but surprising um, dynamics that I've encountered since sabbatical plans were announced to our congregation is the the individuals who have come and said uh and just acknowledge that you know, I, i'm a human there's limitations there are there are weaknesses there are uh there are sacrifices there are um and there is a need for times to rest and to look to the lord and to be poured into and and so the way that that's hit people or dawned on people or people have just appreciated that being communicated which is kind of indirect but it's gotten through in a way that I wasn't anticipating uh, but I'm really grateful um, because the last thing that anybody wants is something to rise or fall on one individual oh may the Lord spare us from that I don't sense that's the case here um, in our church, I'm grateful for that, but I never wanted to become the case here. And uh, 12 weeks of absence is one way to make sure that that, <laughs> that doesn't happen. So, I, I sat with a pastor, first year university. I was at University of Northern British Columbia, Prince George, and was I met with the pastor at this church. I think it was my last week at university because I wasn't coming, I wasn't going back to UMBC. I'd been accepted at Heritage College and Seminary. I just needed someone to talk to about that because it was kind of a weird shift. I'd always said, I am going to do biomedicine. Mm -hmm. And then there was a shift taking place. And I sat down with him and I didn't even really talk about myself. I was more curious about what he did. Um, I I didn't go into the meeting wanting to ask him about what he did, but that just sort of came out of me. And uh, one of the comments he made about his own ministry was, I just want to be so faithful here that if, you know, the proverbial I was hit by a bus happened... The church just keeps going. Like they mourn a little bit, but like they can just keep firing on all cylinders. Yes. And I remember thinking, okay, yeah, that's that's really nice of you. Kind of weird, but like <laughs> that's exactly what we want, right? The, yes. We equip the saints to do the work of a, of the ministry. Ephesians four, eleven and twelve. Yeah, we are building people into Christ, who is the head of the church, never ourselves. And when that happens, hor- there are horrible implications for that. 
for individuals, for churches, for ministries, for organizations. And uh, so moments like this where, and I don't know what it's going to be like. I've never experienced this before, never done this before, but to not get into the pulpit for 12 weeks in a row, I've not, I've not known that for over a decade. Uh, that'll be a new experience. Um, and so I'm sure there'll be things that will come out in my own heart and soul that I will need to be sanctified and need God's transforming grace in. Um, but uh, I think it will also help to to just cultivate that sense of uh, we are unworthy servants doing our duty. This grace has been given to us uh, to proclaim the unsearchable riches of Christ, to borrow Paul's phrase from Ephesians 3. And uh, that'll be good and healthy for for everyone um, and for me and, and for my family as well. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to those dynamics. So on August the 4th, is it, when you're preaching for the first time, We'll have the uh, Grammy music all ready for when you've like usurped your time in the pulpit. No, no, uh, there we go. <laughs> I'll, I'll be so rusty. It'll be so no, weird too. It'll be uh, great. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I want to um, two things. I want to hear what you want to read while you're gone. Yeah. Yeah, but before I do that, I, I wonder if while you're gone, folks listening to this should be challenged to read a book like Discipling by Mark Dever. Great suggestion. So here, you know, it's the most ordinary book you'll ever read, but it will normalize discipleship for you and how it happens in the context of a local church and that we're all responsible for it. Discipling is not a, I'm an elder, so therefore I disciple. It's a, I'm a church member who is striving to grow more like Christ, and I want other people to follow me as I follow Jesus Christ. And then Mark Dever, in his, you know, hilarious style, just says, this looks like taking someone to the grocery store with you when you go to pick up a couple of items for your wife and talking about the gospel with them and demonstrating through your actions that you care about your wife's world as she tries to make dinner without, you know, goat cheese to sprinkle on the salad. So you got to go pick it up for her and you're you're being a kind, loving, understanding husband and it, it, you know, so read it, discipling by Dever maybe. It's uh, discipling people sounds like we have to all of a sudden find a whole bunch of time in our schedule. Program. We don't. We just bring people along with us and the things that we're already, do, already yeah. doing. It, it's really that simple. And so you're not adding anything to your schedule. You're just adding people to what you're doing in your schedule. And uh, we all have a responsibility to make Mark and mature disciples. Yes. All of us. That's the mandate given to the church. And if we're a member of the body of Christ, that's our responsibility. Mm -hmm. And so a great suggestion um, for uh, people to consider. It's short, it's accessible, yep. uh, very helpful. Blue. Uh, if that's your favorite color. Yeah. Green's my favorite color, so whatever. They could have done better on that. Well, I'm with you on that one. Man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as for what I will be reading, um, first and foremost, I plan to uh, read, memorize, meditate on First and Second Timothy. Uh, I'm, I'm really uh, excited, but also very sobered by the endeavor that we are embarking on as a church to see pastors equipped and raised up in our midst, especially because of the warnings we have in Scripture about wolves and false teachers and people coming up from our own selves, teaching distorted, strange things. Paul warns the Ephesian elders about this in Acts 20, and there are many other passages in Scripture uh, that alert us to this reality. One of our elders just recently um, send us something to, to, to help us understand the sobering nature. And we need to be watchful and paying attention and guarding as part of our responsibility of shepherds. And the last thing that we would want to do is to foist that on any other Christians or any other churches. And so I want to have First and Second Timothy written on the tablet of my heart, those two pastoral epistles. So that's just part of who I am. Mm. And that I, it's just there in my mind and... I, I just I operate on the basis of those pastoral epistles. So that's one of my main motivations to engage in that portion of scripture is that if we're going to do this, I need to know those books like the back of my hand. And so uh, my some of my time will be given to committing as much of those to memory as I can. If I can, the whole of those two would just be something that I take with me everywhere I go. So that will be my first um priority and commitment. 
Uh, alongside of that, um, books that I plan to read. One is Lectures to My Students by Charles Spurgeon. Uh, he had a pastor's college, and there's a record of lectures that he gave. And so I'm just interested to know what he prioritized as far as teaching uh, the generation of pastors that he was raising up uh, in his, uh, through his uh, ministry. Uh, and along with that, I'm going to read Jeffrey Chang's book, biography on Spurgeon called Spurgeon the Pastor, which has chapters about this as well, but other things. Uh, there are some books that I would be interested to read for my own sake, but are also part of the pastoral residency reading list. So there is a book called The Pastor's Soul, The Call and Care of an Under-Shepherd by Brian Croft and Jim Sebastio. Then there's The Pastor's Family, uh, Brian and Kara Croft. Uh, so I'm looking forward to reading those for my own soul's sake, but also, and for my family's sake, but also just books that uh, we are expecting residents to read. And then two more. One is called Pastoral Theology in the Classical Tradition, which is a book I read for my MDiv, but with a deadline and relatively quickly. But I loved it so much, I would just like to go through it again and slowly yeah. journal and pray and think through how pastors have uh, cared for God's flock at different times in history. And so that's what this book does. It looks at different individuals from different eras of church history and uh, draws out some principles. And I found that they were like friends that I'd never met, these men, and I just want to spend a little bit more time with them. And then the final book is an examination of Andrew Fuller's ordination sermons, uh, Pastoral Priorities of 18th Century Particular Baptist, I think is maybe cool. the actual title. Because again, I, I think it's helpful to get, to get out of our own culture and time and place and just see how God's people have done this in the past. And so reading the sermons, uh, Andrew Fuller, my understanding is that he was invited to give ordination sermons at many on many different occasions, indicating that he was involved in the lives of young men yeah. who were aspiring to pastoral ministry and who were called as pastors by churches. And then I want to know what does he say to them in those moments and what should we be prioritizing as we seek to... Uh, have a hand in uh, helping form and shape uh, any any that would come uh, as the Lord would bring them through our church. So I love that you use the pronoun we, and you're not just referring to the pastoral staff or the elders. No, that is a collective we. Yes, that is the congregation of Hesler Baptist Church. We are seeking to raise up men who can go and be faithful in other congregations because we, the collective we, need other faithful congregations, and we need the church in southern Ontario and Canada and all across the world to flourish. And, you know, this is one of the reasons why I, I see my internship back when I had it as a success. I, I Mine too. Can, can I speak for you too? Yeah, you can. It's because the collective we here at Hesler Baptist Church took an interest in Caleb. They were patient with Caleb while he learned some what might seem like fairly obvious things to the onlooker, but weren't so obvious to Caleb. And uh, yeah, it, it is a church effort to do these sorts of things. Absolutely. And I'm really glad that you've highlighted that part of the evaluation process that we are building into our pastoral residency program and is, is in the documents that we're, um, we've created is what are the, what's the feedback we get from the congregation? Because God's Spirit is at work in God's people as they engage with God's Word. And they may not, we may not always get it right. We don't. We're not infallible. Um, but uh, I think Spurgeon says something along the lines of, if there's a group of people whose judgment I would not want to quickly dismiss, it would be God's people. And so is this evident to God's people here at Hespler that this brother should be going into ministry? What's their experience of his gifting, of his character, what are they observing? And I want to hear from God's people. And there's also ways in which a congregation is going to help sanctify uh, an individual, as we all experience. And so it very much is a collective endeavor, um, which is why we've been so tried to communicate about it. And we're asking people to read the residency syllabus, which if you're listening to this and you haven't done that yet, please do so. I had a dear sister on Sunday tell me that she's been reading through it and appreciating it, and I'm so glad to hear people's engagement that way. So uh, so do that. Any thoughts, final thoughts about the sabbatical? I think just it, it, it does feel odd 
Um, it feels odd to my wife as well that, uh, you know, we, we love our church. Uh, we love the people of our church. And, uh, you know, some of the weeks we're not going to be in the province. And so we can't physically gather and our kids love our church. And so that's just going to be weird to navigate yeah. that dynamic of we love, we, we, we're members of this church. Uh, and yet there's also that pastoral dynamic. And so the purpose of this is rest, focus, but how much do you come in and out? Like, are you going to be, that's just a, that's just an, a, a funky dynamic yeah. of all of this that we are territory. Yeah. yeah new territory. Yeah. So we would really appreciate prayer for that because we really do love the brothers and sisters here. We will, we'll, we'll miss the, the times that we're, we're not and the time that we're not. And so that, that just feels um, strange uh, to, again, for over 20 years, this has been the spiritual home for us. Um, and so we might feel a little nomadic. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering about that. And uh, I just need to commit that to the Lord. We're something we're praying about as a husband and wife. And so if you're listening or would think about that, that the Lord would give us wisdom of, you know, do we come at all? Do we not come at all? Do we come some when, uh, you know, our kids love being here? That's just a whole dynamic that we would really, I'm just being very candid and open um, about uh, appreciating prayer for that. And and then there there is that, um, just want to use the time well. This is an incredible trust um, that is being given and extended by our elders and by extension, our congregation. And I want to be a good steward of what um, has been entrusted to me. And so uh, there is that sort of kernel of pressure uh, to want to, to demonstrate that this is of benefit to the church. Um, and so uh, I just, that's very much in my mind as well. And so I would appreciate prayer for, for those things. But uh, really, on the whole, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it um, on for all of the reasons uh, given. Any last thoughts from you, brother? Well, it'll be a sweet Sunday when you're back. Because I can go on vacation. Yes. No, I'm, just, I'm totally kidding. <laughs> and so you should. <laughs> no, it will be very sweet to have you guys back. It, it, you know, it's it's like during the summer, people, they go off and they vacation, and we're a little bit more mobile as a congregation because we're able to travel. And, sure. You know, it's just quicker than in the winter, right? And more desirable because the weather's nicer. But uh, it's it's those first few Sundays in September that are so sweet because everyone's back, school has started, and we're like, oh, yeah, this is the family. And we've missed the family all summer long. Right. It'll feel like that again when you guys are back because you're an important part of the family. Well, so. uh, we are grateful to be a part of the family. And I, I'm, I've I'm, i been thinking, uh, uh, I'll, I'll make this the last comment, I've been thinking about uh, just the way our preaching schedule has gone. Uh, at first, I, I, I thought that the last sermon I would preach before sabbatical would be on the Sabbath from Exodus 20, but uh, there's one week um, uh, after that. And so I've, I've enjoyed thinking through, oh, there's some freedom there. What do I preach before I go away for 12 weeks? And uh, I've landed on uh, Philippians 1, uh, 3 through 11, I believe it is, which is just Paul expressing his um, sentiments yeah. to that particular church and the way he's praying for that particular church. I'm really looking forward to just having an opportunity to say, uh, through God's word, uh, how I feel about our church hmm. and the ways that uh, very much we'll be praying for the church and do pray for the church, but especially uh, with an absence. Uh, and I'm really looking forward for that opportunity that this sabbatical will create. Um, I expect that there will probably be some emotion to that for me. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, anyway, I just look forward to to spending time in that portion of God's word and uh, just walking away knowing that all of this and all of us are in the Lord's hands and he is the faithful shepherd of all of us and just resting in his care uh, for me, for my wife, for my kids, for you, for Brianna, uh, for, like, for all of our elders and their wives and for our whole congregation uh, that'll just be, I hope, a, a sweet moment. So look forward to that. Well, this is just another reminder to pray for God's church, uh, not just Hespler Baptist Church, but it uh, helps us realize that 
There's always things going on. The Lord is always doing 10,000 things. We're seeing a couple of them. We've got plans laid for the sabbatical, plans laid for the Galatians series, um, but the Lord has intentions and purposes for all of these things, and so let's pray that he'll be honored and glorified and made much of through all of this. Thank you so much for listening, everyone, and uh, we'll see you this Sunday.